gets it over and gets it back between the circles. Now it's Mystery left wing, a deep three. Three for three to start the first half for Hannah Mystery. And that one was three feet behind the arc. In the front court are the Rams. It's Ruffin on the left wing. Finds Padovano, left corner, three. And she got it as it spins around the rim. Does a 360 and falls. Mystery moves to the left wing. Finds Tapio on the cut to the left block. And she puts it up with the right hand before Tim Billa can come and swat it away. Picks up her dribble. Looks to the left elbow, but it's knocked away by Davis. She's going on the fast break. Trailed by Pierre-Louis. Gets the right block. Pump fix. Up with the right hand and good. Fordham 33. UMass 15. To the left wing. And now left corner. It's Tapio. Left wing. Mystery. Three feet behind the arc. Knocks down the three. Had a mystery. Can't miss in the first half. Still in between the circles. And it's stolen by Ruffin as she tried to pass it away. Ruffin all by herself down to the right block. Puts it up. And the right-handed layup is good in transition. Fordham 50. Dribbles herself to the top of the arc. Has a pick from Clark. Drives down low. Now kicks back out. Tapio left elbow jumper. And nobody around her. 20-point lead for the Rams. Padovano steps back on the foul line. Finds a cutting Davis right block. Puts it up with the right hand. And good off the glass with the layup. Now on the right wing. Under a minute and a half left in regulation. Zapai the right baseline jumper. And she sticks it a foot inside the perimeter. Fordham will be able to keep this one in the backcourt as the final seconds tick away. And we've reached triple zeros, and Fordham comes away with a 23-point victory. It's the Fordham Rams 65, the UMass Minute Women 42. One-on-one -on -one pregame report is coming up next. You're listening to Fordham Rams basketball. I thought the kids stepped up, played great defense. I thought we did a terrific job taking their best player, you know, out of the equation early and um, got her to foul out, and uh, I think a lot of the a lot of the success of today's game was from the defensive end, but I think Tiff had a great individual performance with the double-double, and um, she was steady, and she set the tone early for us. Questions? Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Tiff, I guess just talk about what you were able to see out there offensively that uh, you were able to get the double-double today. Um, well, most of them came from the <laughs> um, I just kind of let the game come to me, and so you know, attacking the baskets like typically what I do, so getting to the foul line and making free throws was pretty, you know, easy. Uh, to, if you were coming off, of, you know, one of a tougher game against VCU, you know, what did you do to kind of rebound from such a tough performance? Um, I've, I've talked to a lot of the coaches and, you know, they've really helped me. I typically am my, like, worst critic, so they really have helped me through that to, you know, really realize that the game is a game of runs and possessions and I'm going to make mistakes so it was just really my mental mindset. I tell her when she does something great she's not going yay tip yay tip <laughs> so when she has a mistake she can't be so down. One possession, move on. Move on. Earlier in the season you mentioned that Tiffany when she wasn't present I guess we should say in front of her that the team will go as far as Tiffany mm -hmm. I said that early, yes I did. <laughs> And I said that because I just felt that she had a quality of a great leadership. And that's like Tiff said, you know, a lot of our conversations were first responsibility you have is as a leader. You know, regardless of how your game is going, you got to lead. You know, so whether you're up or down, the number one thing is to lead because I think the kids respect how far Archie goes. She's playing through some injuries right now, and they, and they respect the fact that, you know, she's fighting through those injuries. And, and, uh, and I, like I said, all the offense we're getting from Tiff, I mean, in her college career, she hasn't done that, you know, and, and I think. She always did in high school. I mean, she was Gatorade Player of the Year for three or four straight years, I think, in her state. Um, <laughs> three years. So, I mean, I knew that she had the offenses, you know, opportunity. But, you know, some, now that she's gotten comfortable with her offenses, I think she's been able to pick her spots of where she can read to pick up the extra points. Coach, you had probably the best first half all season. Uh, what did you say to the team in the locker room, you know, to try to keep the foot on the gas? And, you know, what did you say after that? Great first half. I, I just said, great job. I said, you know what, what we don't want to do is, we, like you said, I don't want to take our foot off the pedal. I mean, because I thought we let up a little bit against VCO. I and mean, we gave them opportunities to get a feel, get back in the game. And, and we had such a terrific, I mean, obviously we shot the ball well. So you're going to be up a lot when you play great defense and you shoot the ball well. But, you know, what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to let up from a defensive end. As you saw in the second half, we couldn't buy a basket. At one point, we're shooting 9%. But um, we, I thought we got sloppy in the second half. So, and I think part of that comes with having a big lead and then playing a lot of kids and trying a lot of different combinations. And so I think once we were able to get over that one hump where they cut it to, I think, 13, um, we were able to kind of respond to it, regroup, and then, you know, get back in the swing. In the last five or six games, about two-thirds, maybe more of the baskets were scored off assists. Is 
Is that something you work with the team on? It's a very unselfish team. I mean, you look at a great example today is Sam Clark. I mean, Sam only had three looks at the basket, and they were power post moves, so no easy looks. But yet she was such a presence defensively. You know, she just really understands help defense and understands positioning and angles on defense. And it's an unselfish group. I mean, there's nobody that's, you know, bigger than the team. And so everybody's willing to share the ball, you know, starting with Tiff. I mean, I think she's an unbelievable passer. So, I mean, I, I think this is a group of kids that takes a lot of pride in including their teammates in every possession. Talk about the defensive play uh, that's been a trending topic for the team. Uh, for you both, talk about what has been so successful about it uh, during the course of conference play. Um, I definitely think how like focused we are on all our assignments is what's been like pushing us through and helping us keep teams to low shooting percentage. Um, you know, when I came to this program, like one of the things that was emphasized to me is that defense is like what we're known for. So I think that it's really important that everyone bought in, and that's like we're continuing that tradition. And we're very detail oriented. Like a lot of the stuff has to do with details on assignments. Like Tiff said, there's assignments, and you'll see the a couple kids we just sit off, and a couple kids we're denying. Our goal is to make them do something they don't want to do. Make someone else make shots. Make a three-pointer, put it on the floor. Make a post player, you know, have to fade, you know. Or, you know, make them do something that they don't want to do. And I thought overall we did a terrific job of that today. Uh, Tiffany, I, I don't know how it was at BC, but, you know, Kids Day is always a wild day here. You know, what was it like playing in front of that kind of atmosphere? I thought it was awesome. It was also hilarious to see them, like, get so excited about all the different <laughs> songs playing and, like, dancing. It was, like, really cute. <laughs> it was really I remember the Rhode Island coach saying last year, we didn't know what to think with all that noise. We couldn't even focus. I don't know if UMass was hit with the same feeling, like just because you can't focus and you can't hear. They had their plays, I could see on the chart, so they were prepared for it, but it's, uh, it, it's hard. It's a great thing. Mean, that's what I was saying on the radio. It just would be great if you know, more of the students and more of the Florida community came out. We have a great product. It would be nice to, to see our students take more of an effort to be here. Does that type of energy help you, Paul, when you go into that, you know, when it comes time for conference tournament play, does that type of atmosphere that you had today help you when it comes time for that conference tournament uh, time? I haven't been to the tournament with this team yet, but I think that it does because I, what's up, what I do know about conference championships or tournaments um, is that it's loud, so you have to be able to, you know, I call a play and then it gets shuffled down through to everyone else because you're not going to be able to hear. So I think it helps prepare people for how it's going to be later once we um, do go to the A-10 tournament. So. And for you, Coach, with your experiences in the tournament, do you think that this is a good test for especially your younger players to get that little taste of, you know, a louder atmosphere? Yeah, I mean, it, it, again, a lot of it will depend. Last year, it depends on who's in those games as to what the crowd's going to be like, because it's usually minimal unless a, a, one of the host teams are, are, are there, like somebody from Richmond is there. Because I know when Richmond played VCU, that's probably their biggest crowd because of the location of the tournament being in Richmond. You know, for us, when we get to that point, when you're on a neutral site, at that point, you just got to stay within the lines. We don't focus on any of that. That's why our out-of-conference schedule, we try to prepare through situations like that. Um, so that when we get to conference tournament time, it's, you know, us and everything within the lines at that point. Uh, Coach, do you, um, do, you guys, do you feel, you know, pressure building as you guys are undefeated in conference? And how do you keep your kid, the younger team, players on the team from kind of, you know, feeling that pressure as you go on this tremendous run? It's new territory. I mean, I want the kids to enjoy it. I mean, they've never been through this before. You know, never been, you know, top team in the beginning. You know, we, we finished last year as number one. But, I mean, we already knew that the that the target was on our back being the champions returning. So it's just, it's basically the same thing. We're, we're, we're us and GW are the team to knock off. And we understand that. We know that. And every day with the scout squad, and we, we challenge them every day. You know, hey, this is not good enough. And if we want to continue, everybody's going to give us their best shot. And it's kind of like I tell the kids, like, think about your biggest rivalry in high school, you know, like, think about who's coming after you. But you know what, to be honest, I, we've worked so hard to get to the point where we respect it that we are the team to beat. For so long, we were the team on the schedule that everybody wanted to play. Now, all of a sudden, we're the team that everybody is in fear of. It's not in fear of, but, you know, that they respect. So now, all of a sudden, they're, they're excited, when, you know, and, and opportunities to, you know, to play us. And, and that's a whole new territory. And I want the kids to embrace it because they worked really hard for that. Any other questions? So for you as an athlete, how do you keep hungry during this stretch? Because, you know, it's, the team's doing really well, so how do you as an athlete continue to stay hungry and continue to keep playing hard? Um, I think our team stays focused and hungry throughout this stretch because every drill and practice is really competitive and we're all like great competitors and no one likes to lose. So 
even in practice, you should see how physical and you know <laughs> intense it gets. So when we when we get the opportunity to play against a team, especially a team that's coming after us, like it's fun. Practices are we want practices to be so hard that the games seem easy. So we, everything we do in practice is pretty tough. Is that what affects how you do during the game? I think because it does. The practices are so difficult. You're so used to it, you know, and then play, bringing in the scout squad. I mean, it's ironic that today, you know, we talk about that. And it's John Cheney's birthday, who's somebody that we use a lot of stuff mm -hmm. from, the Cheney, Cheney chart that we use a Cheney chart in practice. And today's, I'll be calling Coach Cheney later to wish him a happy birthday. And it's also Becky Peters, a former alumni. It's her birthday as well. So, I mean, um, you know, it's just we take great pride in making practices so hard that when we get out there, we can't wait to play against somebody else. Right. And all scouts what's good too. Yeah, and also in practice you're playing against your teammates so they know all your tendencies and they know your basketball game inside and out. So they're playing they're taking away all your strengths. So then when you get to a game and you know things are open that they're not normally open in practice, it just makes it a lot easier. Thank you everyone. Thanks guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.